This college football picks week three edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet a hundred dollars at WinBet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. Hey folks, this is Bud Foster. You're listening to SGPN. Let's let it ride. Go Hokies, man. Welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening. Crame dog. We are alive voices at 80% made it uh, still looking beautiful though. Powered through <laughs> Tuesday to Monday, six day stint in Vegas. Let's go. We're back home in our home away from home slash our real home. Uh, good to be back in sunny California that has fucking humidity right now. Yeah, sweating like a racehorse this morning and trying to walk the kid to school. <laughs> I came home, I'm sitting here like Jesus. Joining us as always to talk college football, Colby Nate, aka the Danta Base. What's up, Colby? Great, great week of college football. Great NFL Sunday, as you oh, saw, yes. as you saw the gods. Wait, I'm sorry, what? The gods. We're Look, talking. They're NFL. trying to move the Bears into the dome, but Hallis, <laughs> Peyton, Sayers, Duerson, the gods. Bring that storm right into right into Soldier Field and remind you what good football is, baby. Well, speaking of storm, we unleashed a storm on Win Bet. Apologies to Win Bet. Ryan and I both gave out Will Disley first touchdown. Dog. I mean, that was a massive cash. What a great way to start Monday night football in prime time. I also saw Win Bet uh Will Disley anytime touchdown seven to one was one of their most bet props. So Thoughts and prayers for the good folks <laughs> over at WinBet. Apologies. And you can tell, I could tell from all of the screenshots, which sh- shout out to the DGENs. Nothing better than getting flooded. Honestly, my stream was so delayed. I found out we won <laughs> from the, the slew of screenshots coming through <laughs> on, on the Twitter feed. And I got to be honest, I can see that people are dipping the toe in. They knew that I hit Mike Evans on Sunday Night Football, eight to one. It was a little yes. chalky, but I told you sometimes you got to eat the chalk. And they're still dipping the toe because I could tell some guys they didn't go full bore on the first touchdown. They did any time and first touchdown. So maybe next week, Sean, they'll have some confidence in us to actually take it all the way. Full, full unit bet on the and bet us here. You know who took it all the way? The good people of Boone, North Carolina. Oh, the oh, game wasn't wow. even being played in Boone, North Carolina. <laughs> folks. Just, we're not done talking about the NFL. Colby. We can when, keep talking. When you about talk, that? Of, when you bring up just the play NFL, more outdoor games. Don't, when you right? bring up the NFL, I mean that rain game that's in that was, Chicago. That was the best game of the weekend. That's what I mean. So well, and we yeah. haven't even gotten to if you've been following on Twitter, Ryan versus Sean Glennon was a social media oh. storm that hit <laughs> uh, late last week. We just haven't had time to get into it. Ryan, do you care to walk people through? Your Sean Glennon story before well, we get to the picks. I, I think we might have to inform the yeah, the say. audience he's who pretty, Sean Glennon is. He's, he's a, a real pre- estate guy. <laughs> he's pretty irrelevant <laughs> if you follow college football today and you're younger. Uh, if you were a Virginia Tech fan, you might remember him. If you're a North Carolina State fan, you might remember the name. Sean Glennon was a quarterback for the Hokies in the early 2000s. He kind of came in after Michael Vick. Before Tyrod, like filling yeah. that gap in there. If you're looking for a three bedroom apartment in Northern Virginia, he also sells real <laughs> estate. His brother is a little bit more famous than him. Played a little bit for the Giants, part of the FML tour. <laughs> also famously showed up to NC State and caused NC State to say, "You know what, Russell Wilson, you should transfer to Wisconsin. We don't need you anymore." So this is a family <laughs> of fucking winners, all right. And Sean Glennon was one of the all time just absolute negative goats of Virginia tech football uh, now, history. I'm an East Carolina fan. Got the pirate shirt on. And why do you like Sean very Glennon? responsible for giving us a win <laughs> Two pick sixes. That was absolutely fantastic. Much like his brother. When you watched him play in the NFL for the bucks or the giants or whatever other team, he looked like shit. They just, they're a family of guys who look like they should be quarterbacks because they're tall and they have a decent strength uh, arm, but they have these comically long necks and it turns out <laughs> They're relative pussies. Now, what I my mistake here is as a hokey, 
I did not realize how many Hokie alum are like Sean Glennon's a dude. So here's what happened. We got one of those Virginia Tech uh, fan or, or media met types who tweeted out uh, this day in Virginia Tech history, Sean Glennon did something. So I quote tweet, fuck Sean Glennon. Yeah. That's it. I didn't tag him. I, I didn't even know he was on Twitter. I just said, fuck Sean Glennon. So then the guy who wrote the original tweet said, if you're going to talk shit to the man, tag him. I was like, all right, I can appreciate that. Then I get another tweet. Why are you talking smack on Sean Glennon? He was a hard nosed guy. Then I get another one. Hey man, if you're going to talk shit, tag him. I mean, he wasn't the best quarterback in Virginia tech history, but come on, man. To which I responded, find me a worse quarterback in Virginia <laughs> tech history, excluding the Fuente era. Now, at this point, it's like, this is funny. I've gotten blocked by a couple like Virginia media, Virginia tech media members. And, and I, I was actually looking to bring it up here because I don't want to misquote the great Sean Glennon, but essentially uh, my, this is one of my lifelong dreams, I, not dreams, but sport accomplishment. <laughs> I, anyone who went to school while I was there would agree with me. Sean Glennon was supposed to be our guy. We're hosting LSU opening the season. And Sean can even at Sean at this point knew yes. me. I was excited for the game. I was excited for the future of this school because we had this amazing elite 11 quarterback as a freshman coming in. He was going to get to red shirt for a year and we were loaded up perfect to go on a run or a couple runs those next couple years. First half LSU beats the shit out of Sean Glenn and he looks like absolute turd fucking sandwich. And guess what happens? <laughs> no more red shirt for Tyrod. He comes in for the second half. So obviously I don't like Sean Glennon for real reasons. This yes. is valid. You failed me. You <laughs> failed me at Sean. How much am I into yeah. rooting for Hokies? No matter what it's yes. almost soccer mom level. Yeah. Yeah. Almost soccer mom level. So for him, for him to come out and shit the bed like this, not a good look. So anyway, long, long story short, uh, I, I say, fuck Sean Glennon and get, guess who pops up out of nowhere, out of social media, irrelevance out of life, irrelevance. Sean Glennon. <laughs> so I'm reading through the thread. Uh, so I, someone said, Hey, you shouldn't say that. I mean, you know, it, look, hindsight, I shouldn't have just said fuck Sean Glennon. So I revised it. What do you fuck, mean? Fuck comma, yeah, Sean what do you Glennon. Mean? This hold, is on, a, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. Fuck comma, Sean Glennon comma really let a fan base down while surrounded by the greatest talent VT has ever seen to which Sean Glennon says, ha ha quote or a comma. The lion doesn't concern himself that, with, with the gold. opinions of the sheep. <laughs> I'm sorry your life sucks so much. You're this miserable. You're this miserable. Fifteen years later, hope <laughs> things get better. To which I, I love how he's referring to himself as a lion. Well, I don't know for if he's what selling a fucking uh, a condo on, in Reston, Virginia. Hold on, when? hold on. <laughs> I reply, I'm not miserable. I'm alive. Sorry, I'm alive. God, he, and he asked me this before the Giants game. I'm alive. Football is back, and we have a great head coach. And by the way, we needed a dog, not a lion. Kiss emoji. Dog. He then responds again. So I'm, I'm at this point. I'm like, I got two hooks in the fish's mouth, and I'm just reeling them in. Enjoy watching from your mom's basement. Mm, this is where he <laughs> fucked up. To which I reply, a picture of God's eye. Thanks. It's a pretty rad setup. <laughs> which then I then may have dropped the thread into the the Discord, and some fans chimed in. Well, but it, was, it was also funny just following because there were random other. Um, People chiming in, going, "Sweet setup." <laughs> uh, do you have to get a separate receiver for each TV? Like, there, there was a guy. There's a lot of questions about the setup. Yeah, do you guys got to use an IP of, of like how do you get all the games? Well, that was the best part. Then, the, like, clearly one of the guys who was angry at me had asked me about the setup, and then I'm explaining, it and he's, I was winning him over with the technical know-how. Anyway, I say all of this to say, Sean Glennon, open invitation to come on this show and talk to me how we can, we can watch the game tape and we can talk about what we could have done better. <laughs> or maybe you can help me buy a place in Blacksburg <laughs> for when I start coming back for games. Uh, uh, either way uh, need to have a conversation with you, but honestly, like he shouldn't have answered as that. someone you know who I mean? has known me for a very long time. Uh, Sean Glennon is on my Steve Buscemi lipstick list of just absolute athletes who played for a team that I love who I hate. He's up there with Tiki Barber. Yeah, I can't even think of a Grant Knoll is on that list. I, yeah. I don't. Who else is on the list? Am I missing anyone else? Joe Judge is now on the fucking <laughs> list. All right. I know Joe Judge bumped Ben McAdoo off the list. Anyway, fuck Sean Glennon. Fuck Sean Glennon. Hey. 
you're looking to fuck up some sports books or an online casino, you got to go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. That's right. Win bet. They have the build your own bet, AKA the same game parlay feature. Perfect for crushing it. Uh, going big on some of these primetime games. So many, uh, so many things to bet on. It, it really is a cornucopia of degeneracy. Love uh, getting down over at WinBet Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. Offer subject to change, terms, conditions at WinBet. That comes from 21 or older in present state. Or playthrough WinBet is available for you or someone you know as a gambling problem. Call 1 800 522 4700. We're also brought to you by the Elias Sports Bureau's new app, the Elias Game Plan app. That's right, E L I A S, the Elias Game Plan app. It is the ultimate sports betting and fantasy companion. A ton of nuggets I, I get for the National Football League. I get right from the Elias Game Plan app, including the fact that uh, AJ Brown most receiving yards in a Philadelphia Eagles receiver debut. So shout out to you, Elias, for that great nugget. See. And again. These are handcrafted, not uh, no artificial machines. Apologies to the database, but these uh, He's no, no Harold Carmichael. Yeah, no AI <laughs> here. Uh, they are just cranking out great information, great stats, um, perfect to your betting or fantasy toolkit. Nice addition there. Uh, all you got to do is look up the Elias Game Plan app in the App Store. You got a 14 day free trial off their monthly plan. Just use promo code SGPN. That is the Elias Game Plan. Uh, sports betting app in the App Store, Google Play Store, promo code SGPN. Last but not least, brought to you by Fubo TV. Fubo TV gives you complete coverage of college and pro football. I have not missed cutting the cord. Fubo TV is uh, amazing. Again, live sports, entertainment, fraction of the price of cable. You don't need all those dumb channels they shove down your throat. Uh, and cloud based DVR, which is really sweet. You can take your shows on the go, watch game footage. Uh, anywhere, just go to Fubo TV.com slash SGP, seven days free and 15% off your first month. Just go to Fubo TV.com slash SGP. That is Fubo TV.com slash SGP. All right, let's do it. Can I, can I add one more little, little nugget that shout out to uh host of many shows across the SGPN landscape uh, doing some other stuff too. Dan Titus fellow Virginia tech alum pointed this out to me. He reminded me that Sean Glennon also chose to wear number seven following Michael Vick. Mm, mm. What, what kind of think about that this. is a disgusting act. One of the brothers decided to think he could follow Michael Vick with his number. The other literally got Russell Wilson kicked out of school <laughs> and, and now they're both selling real estate. And oh, by the way, uh, off the record story, maybe you can pop into discord. I'll tell it sometime, <laughs> but you know, a friend of a friend of a friend, we won't name any names, but may have taken Sean Glennon's sister home to uh, send a message to the family. If you know what I mean? In a positive way. Well, there let's you see. go. Let's see the thing that I said to Sean Glennon. Maybe he, uh, yeah, you, you you can do the math. All right, weekday games. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry. Let me. Uh, we are. This is Colby six back here. Crack open the <laughs> ice cold. Colby six back. All right. I I, I thought <laughs> there I was thought, a huge argument before. Well, I, was, I thought up. I was going to get uh, the sound drop. I'm working on. And it. then I was going to explain that the six pack is Colby's uh, favorite six <laughs> games. Not the best six, or not his favorite, but the best six. No. And we, today we have, we're, we have we weekday have... games, so they don't actually they're not part of this. So it's like I got a six pack over here, maybe a Mad Dog 2020. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, after last year, and I've explained this on the previous two episodes, <laughs> but uh, we went through for the best games, and then mixed in with the weekday got games. It. So. Got it. All right, so th the six pack isn't starting quite yet, but it's going to start in a couple drinks. So we're having a cocktail before the <laughs> six pack, and that cocktail is going to be Florida State, Louisville, heading to Kentucky. Makes sense. Maybe it's a bourbon on the rocks. Maybe a mint julep a little ahead of the Kentucky Derby. Four thirty kickoff on Friday. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, Louisville two point home dog plus one ten on the money line. Florida State minus one thirty. Fifty six is the total. Handicap simple here. This is a, this is a true hostile environment for Florida state. Have they seen one of those yet? They've had a hard test. Well, yet. they were in new Orleans, but that, that was actually kind of 50, 50. I feel like maybe 60, 40 that, LSU. 
Yeah, yeah, but it was a neutral site. And they got very fortunate. I mean, that game neutral was neutral site. That game was bananas. I mean, I guess No, it, yeah, what, yeah. The there super was, what they were just in the uh, Mercedes Benz Dome to beat LSU, right? Yeah, but no, they, no, they, they were the they, Superdome. Yeah. In in New Orleans. Yeah, what, that no, was wait. in New Orleans. Yeah, that's what he called it, the Mercedes Benz. Isn't that the Atlanta? Is Mercedes Benz? Oh, Atlanta? you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, sorry, it's, Superdome. The, it used to be the Mercedes. Yeah, Benz these domes yeah, are hard sorry, to uh, decipher because they're all shit, right? Florida State though, <laughs> four and one against the spread in their no. last five road games. Yeah, so I, I guess what my take here is though, this is this is the, one of the more hostile environments they they've seen in a while. I also think you're getting a Florida State team that we were able to do a little bit of a sell high operation on. Which when's the last time we got to sell Florida State high, Cole? Mm, mm. And I get to take my dude Malik Cunningham hey, as a so home great, dog. Great road win. Your your playoff hopes are still alive. <laughs> That's my champion. All right. <laughs> I mean, Malik it Cunningham looked now. okay, but man, I that game to me oh. wasn't about Louisville playing that well. It was like UCF just completely shit the bed. I I don't know. I. I wasn't really wowed by anything that Louisville was doing. Terrible coaching, I thought, by Gus Malzahn. But no, it's Gus Malzahn. It's still hard yeah. for Louisville. It's still hard for anyone to go into the, to the moon bounce and grab a dub. Uh, Apparently, not that hard. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, UCF didn't score a point in the second half. I, yeah, I, I think Gus Malzahn has a tendency to do this. He did this at Auburn, where he actually out coaches himself. And I thought that's what a lot of that game was about. But also, it was only a matter of time before Malik Cunningham would go off, and he had a huge, like, forty-five yard touchdown run in that game. That's true. Um, and look, Florida State hasn't hasn't started three and zero since two thousand fifteen. All right, that's a long time ago. Jim Bob was there. Um, I, I'm on I'm on the cards at home. Let's go. Well, this is an easy one. I, I understand the number. Like the this is the same trap. I felt. I mean, look, look, the number is certainly pulling me towards Louisville, like outside of the fact that uh, I like Louisville uh, to me, this is just a fate of Florida state though. I, like, I want to see what Florida, like, I don't like, do you think LSU is a great team? No. Yeah. See my, my, like I, my takeaway from that first week is cool. Great. But let's Jordan not Travis, get overly though, you, excited. You don't think Jordan Travis looked good? He's fun, but this he Florida, did look good. He did there, look good. There are many programs that uh, have done a better job of playing college football over the last couple of years, and I think for Florida State, this this is just a classic shit yourself game for this program. Real tough test here. If they come away with this one, I'll I'll buy Jordan Travis. I'll say that. But Jordan Travis versus Malik Cunningham, wrong guys favored. Louisville, give me Louisville. And, and Louisville, I believe, has won four of the last six in this matchup, uh, including a couple. This last is Friday weekends. night. Yeah. I, I don't think we mentioned that. I, I do. Yeah. I do. Okay. I know you're hitting the blackjack table over there. But I mean, Colby, what is Louisville not lit? Uh, it will be lit. The shack. Uh, you know, you got to go. It's Papa tough shack. to go into the shack and get a dub. Now the shack um, is uh, where where uh, Coach Leach was allegedly taking his players that weren't <laughs> behaving. This is uh, the, the the Shaq's house. Yeah, Louisville all day, home dog. Let's go. Are you are you pulling the trigger on FSU? I don't know. I'm, I'm going back and forth. I think Louisville just like didn't look that good to me, um, even in that win. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Florida State. It's college football. It's Last week, time they played sport. in Louisville, Louisville won 48 mm. to 16. Interesting. All right. well, yeah, I'll go. And that was dog. also a night game, if I'm not mistaken. Other Friday night game, Air, Air Force heads to Wyoming. We don't have to talk about all the primetime games. Air Force heads to Wyoming. Uh, Wyoming, uh, n- not the complete shit team we thought they might be. And they're in, they're home in Laramie. 5 p.m. kick. Air Force coming in as a huge favorite, minus 15, minus 625 on the money line. Wyoming plus 450. 46 and a half is the total. Colby, any chance the Air Force gets in the playoff? Uh no, although they should. They should. <laughs> They've because been a machine. Troy Calhoun's one of the best coaches. If Nebraska d- is is smart, they would give him a phone call. Um uh yeah, I mean Air Force, he's looking to have his what third double digit win season in four years, and I think they're on on a path for that. But this is a tricky game. Laramie is a tough spot for them lately. Um Air Force has lost their last three in Laramie. Yeah, and and uh, I don't know whether it's altitude. I think it is a little bit of a benefit for Air Force to get them in September in Laramie, um, just because it's what the weather's not as bad. Is yeah, that but, but but Wyoming plays a style of ball. They're just a run heavy physical team. Even they got killed in the portal this off season, um, but they still like they're not an explosive. They they fit Air Force style of football. 
And uh, you know, Craig Bull, he was a former defensive back at Nebraska with but with Tom Osborne, so they ran the option. So back when anyone, they played college yeah, football. Yeah, back when Nebraska played college football. Um and uh so I'll take the fifteen at home. I think it's a little big. Another thing is Air Force, even when they're efficient, I know they just whooped Colorado and Northern Iowa, which are you know, the Northern Iowa win I was both I was it, uh, impressed by how how the depth. Yeah, I mean there. they destroyed yeah. Colorado. So and, and I I think I started saying this for for Florida State. I don't think I finished the point. Like the the market or the the number was pushing me towards Louisville, especially with the lopsided bet percentages. Uh, same with this Air Force Wyoming game. You're seeing two thirds of the bets coming in on Air Force, two thirds of the money on Wyoming. Uh, that sprinkled with a massive spread like this, that tells me we have a we have a we have a spread that doesn't quite make sense. I'm in a spot. Air Force that defense Wyoming. is is really good, but I, I guess that would be the only thing that would concern me if, of taking Wyoming is that maybe Air Force gets a bunch of turnovers. They force three against Colorado. It, they held the Colorado quarterback five twenty one for fifty one passing yards. Now I get it. Wyoming's not going to try and throw that many times. I'd imagine, but. I guess that would be my concern is also, that they busted open with some turnovers. Colorado was the number 129th offense a season ago. Um fair. Uh, Wyoming's offense isn't great by any means. I just think you're at home this place gets get it gets lit. Yes, so, there uh, it is. Colby, um, you can say lit, Colby. And they've been playing this since the 1950s. This yeah. is this is fucking great. This is this is All right, let's take it. Yeah, Wyoming. Let's go. Let's go. Wow, going against Air Force, huh, Sean? I'm going against Air Force because I'm an Army guy, but you mm. normally take Air Force, so I'm just giving you one last chance. No, I'll go. I'll go home dog here. Yeah, home dog special on Friday night. No but Thursday games, huh? Yeah. What the, are they doing? The, I, they're really pissing me off with this shit. Hey, folks, look. Hate to tell you this. Uh, I mean, we do have we do have NFL, but, but there is room for lots of games. Maybe Wednesday, maybe Thursday, maybe Tuesday. Hey, we can watch an NFL game. And a college football game at the same fucking time. This is 2022, folks. Well, we do all have. Right? We have God's eye. Does everyone have God's eye? Everybody does. All right. They have a cell phone. All right. <laughs> Put a game on on your cell phone. Put another one on your girl's cell phone. Uh, it is. Oh. Ch- it is Chiefs uh, versus Chargers. Maybe that's why they're, it's like a really good game. So they're like, mm, we don't have to compete with that. Uh, for the chat, who was asking about the elevation difference between Air Force and. Uh, Wyoming, uh, Wyoming, n- about fifteen hundred feet higher. So there's still a little difference, but n- not not huge. All right, let's head over to sa- Saturday. Six packing, we're six packing. Crack with cold All one right, open. Cr- cracking the first one open. Oklahoma heads to Nebraska. Boy, <laughs> I mean, w- I guess we'll talk about the Scott Frost experience coming to an end. But how about uh, the Sun Belt? N- real quick, nine a.m. kick. Nebraska catching twelve. Uh, 350 on the money line, minus 450 for Oklahoma. 66 and a half is the total. I mean, the Scott Frost experience started so poorly. You don't <laughs> fire him in the off season. You say no, we're going to stick to this guy, and it starts so poorly. You fire him two weeks, three weeks ahead of where you can save how much on 6.25 million. Oh. If they just would have waited till October first. I mean, that is, you really hate someone. Well, and another thing, what it does is, you know, they're talking like, oh, they're going to interview, uh, you're going to have m- maybe Matt Rule, maybe Lance Leipold, maybe Matt Campbell. I saw Joe, I saw Justin Fuente's name pop up. <laughs> and I, I don't believe that, but. Um, it, true. No, like no, no. I believe you saw it. that, but I don't believe they're actually going to consider no, that. Please don't, Nebraska. Um, no, but, but you see all that. But now all of a sudden you hand it over to a guy in, in Mickey Joseph. What happens if he had, I mean, they're, they're talented. That offense can still fly. What happens if he goes eight and four, the fans might want him. He played quarterback at Nebraska two from 88 to 91. Um, I, I thought that was very interesting that Trev Alberts pulled the plug um, and, and paid that money at to some get him point, out. The coach, They've right? lost five of their last six home games. Like he, at some point you just got to pull the plug. Yeah. Do um, you, Adrian Martinez looking like a stud at Kansas State. But doesn't without that, Scott Frost, doesn't that give them false hope though? Like, like what happens if Joseph goes eight and four? Then the fans are going to say, "Hey, let's keep Joseph." No, no I, 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 I would say this. I think it gives them time to find the next guy. Like, it, it, assuming they don't get bullied into replacing him with a subpar, like. I think what you you have to take what you learn from this experience, right? I'll use the Virginia Tech example. The athletic director. Hired Fu- Fuente and Frost were similar type hires. I think you could uh, Frost probably a higher caliber name. Similar guys. They 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 put their hat on the fact that they were fucking stud offensive guys. 
and it, it was sexy, it was flashy in the moment. But it, as an AD, he has to now reflect and say, well, what is Nebraska football all about? Uh, well, when they were successful, they ran the option. Don't overthink it. Uh, so maybe they don't go to the option, but you have to at least like we were a hard nosed team. Like when you came to Nebraska, we beat you up. We played physical. If they ever want well, their their defense really we finished the, the game. Issue. We they're, finished the game. Yeah. We finished the game. But we we coached the little bits of football that allowed us to finish the game without fucking up special if teams. If they every ever time. want to be nationally relevant, as in like a top ten team, they have to go back to the option. You're in Nebraska. You don't produce talent. You do not produce talent in that state. But you're in the Big Ten. That's why the you, Big Ten you, let you, you recruit. Will, you will have to do that because Ohio kids and Michigan kids are going to want to go to Michigan and Ohio State. Yeah, I mean, bottom line, what happened to Nebraska is that a, a coach taught them how to lose, and losing culture doesn't get ripped out immediately. Losing culture is not a need weed. to get it. You need to get down weed. to the roots. And so, to to Trev Albert's credit, he understood that this was more than just going out with a couple uh, pair of glove and ripping out some weeds. He's got to sever this disease from the head. And so, it starts with getting rid of Scott Frost. It may be the interim coach, as you point out, bring in someone who knows Nebraska football. Uh, I think it's I think it's reckless though what Trev Alberts did. I would have waited a couple weeks because Mickey Joseph is a legend in Lincoln in his own right. This is a very historic rivalry. You want me to game finish the, the comparison century. because who did the who did the Hokies bring in as an interim coach? Uh, J. C. Yes, Price, but they did it the final game of the season. A legend. You didn't give him a, a long enough leash. No, but he, yeah, it wasn't the final game. It was it was a couple games. And and Coach Price, he's still here. He he became the 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 bridge to hand off to the new Dude, what, regime. Nebraska ha- has only played one Big Ten game so far. They could still win the Big Ten West. And play for the the Big Ten championship. Yeah, right. The Big Ten West. We just saw Washington State beat Wisconsin. We saw Iowa lose to yeah. Iowa State. I, I you saw Northwestern lose to Duke. It is a wide open fucking. So you are giving the, like what happens? I if can't he does? tell if I'm arguing against you or for like. We're, we're, I, I just I, think <laughs> Alberts was reckless to 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 do it this well, week. And you so just don't have like continue to be a dumpster fire. This season's already written off in a way. But all right, so. Again, Virginia Tech made a similar decision to not wait for a buyout. Why? Because the guy fucking sucked. What's reckless Send about a firing a guy that sucks and replacing him with an uh, alumnus? Uh, well, I, I who think, I, I think I've like. explained that though. What happens if he does do really well? Then you're going to be caught in a jam. You wanted you to mean, hire your. You coach. mean like J.C. Price beating UVA and being carried off the fucking field? Well, you say, "Cool, you're on the next staff." But, but we're that's hiring still someone UVA. Else. Any, anyone could do that. It, this is no, different. If, if he if, beats Oklahoma, I think you're yeah, off. If he, yeah. if he actually, goes, if he goes eight and four, or wait, and, and then maybe you should consider him as your. That's coach. That's what I'm saying, and then that Which kind is, of. Which is fine. It's fine. Well, depending on how you look no, at it, I, you normally want to get your guy. I think as you're an athletic off. director, you off. want to get someone that you can invest in. I would have waited a few more weeks. It's not a reckless to fire a shitty coach. Yeah. Uh, all right. So really, the question is: Does Nebraska get up for this game? Do no. they? No. Do they have a like get rid of uh, Scott Frost? We're gonna you know show him that it, Scott Frost was the problem. I think they might get up for this game. The problem is their defense is so bad. Like I don't know if they. I mean, they're averaging 492 yards per game, eighth worst defense in the country. Like, how does Oklahoma not light them up? Uh, because Oklahoma, I have concerns. They were down. They 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 were up seven to three at the half, and they scored with like 20 seconds left to yeah. Kent State. I'm yeah, sorry, Oklahoma's I'm not buying in. Well. I'm weird. not buying in yet, and I think that's too many points. And like I said, Mickey Joseph went to Nebraska. This is one of the best rivalries in college football. I know they took it what away he, from what us. What position did he coach? Cor- he, no, uh, did he coach uh, oh, or no. did he play? No, no. What was uh, he coaching? Uh, I believe he was. He came over from LSU. I want to say uh, I don't. I for, I forget off the top of my head right now because he wasn't OC. Um, Wait, he wasn't on the staff. No, he was on the staff, oh. but I know OC was Whipple. So uh, I'd have to pull up what what is exactly. Whipple still there? Yes. I mean, I certainly think a guy like Whipple might have a chip on his shoulder. Scott Frost was talking shit week one. I, look, you can make the argument that this team will like show some good effort here, but I mean, I think much of the alumni will feel like you feel are feeling right now, which is like fuck, the season's over. I think this could be a flat spot, and as soon as long as Oklahoma shows up and realizes, like I'm sure. Uh, and I'm completely blanking on a uh, former defensive coordinator from Cle- Clemson's Brent name. Venables. Venables. Yeah. I'm sure Venables like echoes what you're saying, right? Like we, like last week was embarrassing. We, we d- should not have taken it there. Hard nosed guy. 
he sees a weak team. Venables is going to understand. Like this is the kind of team you can. And Oklahoma break is early. coming off a bye, so they've had two weeks. You to can prepare break. No, 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 they play Kent State. Yeah, Kent State. Yeah. Well, well, wait, kind, that was kind of a bye. Yeah. Uh, I think they're broke. I mean, like this is the kind of thing. Like Brent Venables is a guy who has a coach on his staff that's just there to hold him back. Right? He's going to understand how to see a wounded animal and break it. And I think Nebraska is a wounded animal. So the handicap here would be I'm fading Nebraska until they show up. Maybe maybe they will have a JC Price like resurgence. I just don't think it happens in a game against Oklahoma. No, Mickey Joseph knows this rivalry. He kick. knows this rivalry. Not He's been game. a part of this. Yeah, I, I yeah. gave the case for why you're right, Colby, but I'm going to go against my own case. Uh, I'm going to lay the points with my Oklahoma Sooners. Yeah, I think Oklahoma gets it done. I and I think Oklahoma's defense probably isn't as, or people don't realize how good it is. Um, so I think they, yeah, they'll win by two touchdowns. Colby, you're taking Nebraska. I am. Twelve is a lot, but yeah, I'm going Oklahoma. And remember when I gave out Oklahoma at uh, forty to one to win the national championship because they had access. It's now sixty to one. Oh my god! They haven't looked good this season. That's all right. I might buy a couple. <laughs> I mean, checks. I guess they're two and zero. Oh. They've whooped uh, both. Who's teams. winning the Big Twelve? Yeah. Uh, I, uh, my Kansas Jayhawks. <laughs> talk, talk to me. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Moving along. 9 a.m. Kick here in Syracuse, New, New York. Not sure why we're talking about Purdue versus Syracuse. What do you mean? Always a weird road trip when you head up to the Carrier Dome. Is it still the Carrier Dome? No, Sy- it's something else. <laughs> Syracuse now. is a pick 'em minus 110 each way. 58 and a half is the total. Tell me why, Colby. Why is this on the list? I mean, well, because. Syracuse is looking really good. And <laughs> your boy Dundee was all over this. Uh, I told you, Robert and I, he comes over from coaching Brandon Armstrong. Games. Comes over from coaching Brandon Armstrong. He grabs Garrett, he's got Garrett Schrader, the former Mississippi State wide out. His stat line so far this season, 38 of 48, 528, completing almost 80% of his passes for mm. eleven yards of completion, five touchdowns, zero interceptions. Wow, what, what's that, that includes whooping your your preseason playoff team, the Louisville Cardinals. Uh, Why do you keep one to seven at home? That was crazy. Why do you keep bringing that? And up? Sean Tucker, uh, this is a, Sean Tucker's a beast running back. They also have Aronde Gadsden uh, Jr. Remember him for the old Dolphin Miami Dolphins, that gigantic wideout. Um, no, I like this team. I, I I thought the Anaya hire was was cut it like that was a low key great get. I'm on the cues in the dome. Let's go. This one should be a little wild though because Purdue's got that offense to to roll a little bit. But Syracuse defense played well. Shut down Malik Cunningham. Went on the road to Rentschler. Tough to go on the road to UConn and grab that dub. <laughs> Anyone Purdue, Purdue coming off a nice win over Indiana State, fifty six mm. to nothing. Larry uh, Bird playing in that game. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Purdue uh, throwing for three hundred twenty seven yards per game. Syracuse is allowing just one hundred fifty one yards in the air. Again, you know, you factor in some of these shittier teams, it's a little different. But uh, yeah, I'm going to take Syracuse at home. I mean, when in doubt, take Cuse at home. That it is not an easy victory. It's, an easy it's a weird to road trip for the ACC. Also, kind of a weird road trip for uh, Purdue here. Uh, yeah, I'll take Syracuse as well. I, I, anytime you can take down a uh, playoff college football playoff contender like Louisville at home like that, give it, I wish this was a night game. Nine a.m. Weird, weird, uh, weird stuff happens. You can't tell if it's night or day in that shitty weird, dome. <laughs> weird, right? st- weird stuff yeah. happens in the dome at the early kick. I will say that. BYU, twelve thirty here on the West Coast. We're heading to Eugene. BYU also heading to Eugene to take on Oregon. The Ducks. Last time we quacked on air, Oregon laid a fucking egg. Minus three and a half in this one. Minus one sixty five on the money line. BYU plus one thirty five. Fifty seven and a half is the total. BYU gave you a hell of a sweat last week, Sean. Oh uh-huh. my God! Uh, well, we were enjoying that one in the book, man. Well, I and, and shout out to Sean because we spent a decent amount of time like talking about okay, BYU. Uh, if this does get to three overtime, Sean almost certainly won't know the rules. So let's make sure we have an opportunity to record him being really pissed off when he finds out they ha- it's only a two point opportunity and he can't cover his two and a half. <laughs> nah, I, well, and, you knew and, the rule. Yeah, and we gave it out at three and a half on oh, the God. show <laughs> as one of my locks. So that looked horrible. I was able to bet it in Vegas because everyone got scared off. Oh, their two receivers are. At. We're talking about Jaron Hall. This guy gets it done. <laughs> Dog. He's not gonna miss a couple receivers. Dog. See, uh, he's, uh, man, they just kept missing field goals. Neither team wanted to win that game, and 
Wow, got it done in double overtime. And I kept trying to think, like, all right, after they scored the touchdown, am I rooting for them to get the two point conversion or not? Um, and then <laughs> I didn't really. By the time I figured it out, it was the game was over. So uh, BYU, that what a sweat that was. But that was a weird game. Like uh, BYU just could not run the ball. Uh, two point five yards for carries uh, on thirty three uh, attempts. Baylor's got like a top five defensive line. Yeah. So c- kind of saw that a little bit coming. Maybe I thought it'd be a little bit better, but uh, yeah, I mean, this game's awesome. It's out. Austin, Oregon obviously responded. Hope you cashed in magic man Blanco. when I gave you that birthday lock of Oregon minus 21 against E dub. Um, oh, oh, there you go. BYU two and O against the spread. I kind of want to fade BYU after that uh, game, but am I really excited to take Oregon is, is really the, no. It, but what Th- they know that you're not excited to take Oregon. Yeah. That's why they're making it three and a half. So it's so easy to be like, well, BYU was really fun last week. What you, what you have to remember Colby lit environment. It is a it's great, a, it's a great powerful environment. environment yeah. And the, the, the energies of the great soak really brings powers to BYU. And so uh, it's hard for me to take BYU with a short number a week after they like clearly the home crowd got them there. That was it. If they're not at home, if that's a neutral site it, it game just versus like Baylor, such they a lose. letdown spot for BYU, who I like their team, but I, I gotta go Oregon here because I think going on the road after that triple a double overtime win, it's just a massive letdown spot. During these preseason, uh, well, early season, we'll call them college football games. You really, it's it's got it's all about the fucking emotional spots, and this is like to your point, massive letdown. We've been good with the letdown spots. I'm gonna take the points. <laughs> Notre Dame. I'm gonna take uh, the points, man. Really? I am. I, I think like it's BYU be a as a game. team, but yeah. I, I and I and I hate laying points with Bo Nix. That's what I'm about to say. To me, I, I see opportunity with BYU's defense and Bo Nix. Be, they got their ass beat so bad week one. Like this team is gonna be on a constant like crescendo of like they have some talent. I understand it's a new coach, but I I, I just I don't have enough faith that this BYU team is gonna no, take to the road. I, I'm concerned about the the home environment and the momentum of the game, but. I yeah, mean, the, the Kal- Kalani Sataki's done week. this though. He's gone into USC. He's gone. I think he went into what Madison, Wisconsin, yep. and grabbed some dubs. Uh, I think it'll be close enough that you can cover this, and uh, potentially, I think BYU. I actually think BYU is the better football team. It's just can they weather the storm? How often you think uh, we've been looking at a, a team coming into Oregon catching 70 percent of the money? Mm. That's it's scary, mm. right? Because the number's not moving off this three and a half. Why is that, Sean? Cause they want you to yeah. take yep. the three yep. and a half it, it, instead. You should be laying the three and a half. So yeah, give me Oregon minus three. And a if half. your college professor is giving you shit for having the AirPods in during class, just explain to him you're going to school here as well. Economics, Pre- Penn Knox. This is nothing more <laughs> than reading mar- market efficiencies and understanding uh, signals that Penn state minus three heading to the beautiful state of Alabama to take on Auburn. Twelve thirty kick on the West Coast. Minus one sixty for Penn State. Plus one thirty for Auburn. Forty eight and a half is the total. Ah man, this this is a tricky one because you know I, I think what was the result of the Penn State Auburn game last year, Colby? Penn State won by eight, yeah. if memory serves me correct. Uh, in Happy Valley. Now they they flip it around. They are playing a true home and home, Colby. So you, you do have to. I, I understand why it's in the six pack because. Uh, as you as you know, you love the the home and homes. I I just worry about James Franklin uh, traveling away from Happy Valley without Coach Pry at his side for this tough game against the SEC. Ah, come on, uh, Sean Clifford. Uh, he's got a little dog in him. Took a oh, took a so bunch. Hold of, on, pause the show. No, I mean, you come can't on. say Sean Clifford has dog in him. He told me. He just said Sean. He Clifford blew out dogged. his knee and then came back and and drove them down the field oh and my. got that cover of <laughs> oh three and a God. half. Ryan, that I'm, is I'm that is dog man. mentality to me. Uh, they destroyed Ohio as they should, and uh, the running back Nicholas Singleton, 170 mm. yards, freshman, two touchdowns on 10 carries. I I think Penn State rolls. I mean Auburn uh, law, uh, beat San Jose State by eight points last week. Yeah. San Jose State it, they keep a good program. As Colby will let you I, know. I'm with you though. I, Auburn's got a lot of question marks. They already fired their athletic director unjustly does just, he, just well, two wait, weeks ago. Does he coach? No, but I'm saying this place is a dumpster fire yeah. right now, and that's why I think Penn State's going to roll. Um, I obviously concerned once again another lit environment, but at the same time, uh, Penn State just is the better football team. They're going to win this game. <sighs> 
Yeah, I mean, I, the the number surprised me. Honestly, I thought that it would be going to be bigger. I thought it'd be Penn State minus six or seven, right? Uh, no, I, no, but I, definitely not three. Uh, this I mean, is, Auburn was losing at halftime this, to San Jose this State. This is giving yeah. Auburn a ton of respect for their their home, like SEC situational SEC. spot and everything. Yeah, they're they're getting a lot of respect for that, but. I think they're running into a Penn State team that I mean they played them last year and they beat them and which though so there'll be some confidence there. I understand the environment will be, um, I don't know, afternoon lit, early early nighttime lit. shades of lit. Like they'll have some nice autumn skies out, down there. But yeah, I'll take Penn State. This one's for Coach Pry. I, I'm hearing they're 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 playing this one for Coach Pry. Uh, 1 p.m. on the West Coast. We're heading to Houston. Right. Oh, what we got to stop for something. Okay. Yes, we do. My we bad. do ads on I, the I show. Jumped, I jump past I the green line. I know there's <laughs> it's on the, uh, we, it, we didn't cover in the pre-production meeting this time. Sorry. Well, Ryan, I know, I know you're chomping at the bit to cash in big. Well, you should check out no house advantage. It is the most dynamic fantasy sports platform available today. They got pick them a contest. You can play versus other people. You have a shot at winning $250,000 in cash. Are you kidding me? All you gotta do is download the app, AKA no house advantage, choose a contest select your player props. You can earn points for correct picks and climb the leaderboard for a massive shot at cash. Uh, you can also test your skills versus the house win up to 20 X. The amount you put in, uh, you can bet up to five player prop over unders player matchups for all the sports, NFL, uh, MLB, MMA, NASCAR. All you got to do is go to nohouseadvantage.com or download the app. No house advantage. Use our promo code S G P N and get a first deposit match up to $25. No house advantage.com promo code SGPN first deposit match up to $25. Also brought to you by promo guide.us. It is a great spot. If you're looking for EV betting strategies, not only do they help you uh, with the picks with some great analytics and uh, just some great information to get that ROI up, but they also find you the best daily promos the best daily odds. Again, not only are they helping you out a little bit with the picks, but the best odds and how to cash in the most uh, and in uh, promo guy run by a small team of passionate sports fans dedicated to building a well-informed, better betting community. All you got to do is go to promo guide.us. Check out their, um, you know, proven method for betting smarter promo guide.us. Last but not least, Sleeper Fantasy. That right, that's right. Sleeper Fantasy is your one-stop shop. You can do uh, NFL, college football. Shout out to old uh, Pick Dundee over here. I gave my phone while we were sitting in the sports book, and I said, "Give me a, a three-team uh, sleeper lineup." Next thing I know, I got a plus six hundred return sitting in the old sleeper account. You can win two x all the way up to twenty x. I know Colby and his brother are going to be uh, talking sleeper plays as well on the college. Football experience again over under. It's great for NFL. It's great for college. Sleeper.com slash SGP. And you can just copy our picks that we enter in there with one button. Uh, very fun. Sleeper.com slash SGP on your mobile phone. 100% deposit match up to $100. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Nice work, Sean. Thank <clears throat> you. All right. This is just uh, do we have like a caution sound effect? Maybe we can just use breaking. I would be cautioning yourself before uh, listening to Colby's take on this game because we're talking Kansas on the road. Oh, like I've been wrong before with this team. <laughs> Kansas, how many wins do they have this year? Two. How many losses? Zero. Oh my goodness! It's it must be glorious down there in Lawrence. Houston Tex. Uh, Houston the, is hosting Kansas here. Plus ten for Kansas on the road. Plus two seventy five. Minus three fifty for Houston. Fifty eight is the total. Oh man. Well, shout out to Kansas. I mean, Kansas. This is. And I know they were they were a what what was the spread in West Virginia game? Uh, thirteen and a half or fourteen, depending on they where were it closed. Yeah, yeah, massive dogs. I mean, it didn't matter, but they won in overtime by thirteen nah, points. Um, they actually blew a, a a double digit fourth quarter lead. That West Virginia yeah. came back, and then they showed they showed some great. But I'm poise. just saying, winning yeah. in overtime by thirteen points, it's a shame it was wasted on a dog mm, instead know. of a favorite that oh. was like up by ten points. It could have uh, been like where you're like you write the bet off. You're like, there's no way this is going to cover. And then let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, we have to remember and pay homage to the great Andrew. Luck, oh, it was, it was, was why I fell in love with them. Minus seven and a half. Minus seven and a half. Stanford <laughs> USC. This was back when the triple overtime. Uh, that's when you started to have to go for two. It goes to overtime. First two overtimes, nothing. Uh, third overtime, 
Stanford gets the touchdown, goes for two, goes up eight, and then they sack USC, strip sack, get the fumble, and I cover the seven and a half. It was an all timer. Uh, <laughs> Kansas. I, I mean, I like this Houston team, but Houston, they played so much football. Like they uh, triple over time against UTSA and watching that game tune took a ton of shots. And then you have a double overtime game that you just lost to Texas tech. Uh, I, I think this team might be a little banged up. Like they they're, they've been playing pretty physical quarterback, not afraid to sit back there and take some shots. Um, I, I think, I mean, th- I'm, I'm surprised that Kansas is getting 10. Considering how well they've played and how well they've they've run the ball, two hundred yards, four touchdowns as a team against the Mountaineers, and they don't beat themselves. And I yeah. think that that's really what Kansas has done for the past. I don't know. I I feel like twenty years, fifteen years, something like that. Um, Jalen Daniels, the the freshman that they started last year, you know, last year or last week, two two hundred nineteen yards in the air, three touchdowns. He also had eighty five yards rushing. And I even saw uh, Houston's defensive coordinator say he's the best quarterback we have faced. Uh, thus far, which is actually, I mean, he played UTSA and, and Texas Tech, so those are pretty good quarterbacks there. Um, uh, you got to take the points here. I, I was all over Houston. I think Houston's still a good team, but they were fool's gold coming into it last year. They had a very easy schedule. You could easily argue that they should be zero and two, or I guess one and one. Uh, yeah, both games went to overtime, but uh, got to take the points here. And th- this is a potential uh, spot for another double-digit dog because I do think this is a game. I think. Uh, Jalen Daniels and that offense will have success. Like I said, they don't turn the ball over. The defense is is the clear weakness of, of Kansas, but it's improving. It's been an, improving every week ever since Leipold took the job. So uh, give me the points. Uh, I think the, the I mean it's slightly, but my big notes on this game are, are kind of highlighting the defense. Uh, J T Daniels nine yards per an attempt last week. It's not very good. It's not even that much better than where they were last year. As the what was their rank on defense? Like one twenty. Yeah, but that 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 corner Kobe Bryant is is a baller. Like he he got what Big Twelve Defensive Player of the of the week past two weeks. Nine yards per play is a lot, and I would expect uh, we we would we would see our guy in Houston. I'm 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 a sucker for Houston, but I would imagine Tune should have a nice game this week. I think you will. Like a DFS play, I think both quarterbacks. Could have a really good. So day. to your point, maybe this is more yeah. of a. We're not total guys. But maybe this is an over. Fifty eight. Uh, you highlighted all the Great reasons bet. why that uh, Houston's been playing a lot of quarters, but this is a back to back road spot. Like a, a, that's true for Kansas. Yeah, a back to back road spot where again, you know what tends to to happen to teams when they do have a letdown. It, well, your defense already sucks, so it's about if your offense doesn't doesn't stand up to the test. So. Another very popular dog, and I wonder if this has to do with all the big money lines hitting. Yeah, but a, another like this is a near eighty twenty split. Kansas is getting all the action. That's terrifying to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna trust I'm gonna trust my my ability to see what's happening here, and I'm gonna take Houston again. Market analyst Ryan Kramer. 10, 10 points for Kansas. We we had this conversation. Kansas is good though, dude. Uh, that offense is good. You look at last season in Houston. I'll say it's not as many points as it seems just because of the way they play defense. Last season in Houston, they lost to Texas tech. They only beat Navy by eight. They needed overtime to beat ECU by seven, only beat SMU by seven. Kansas is on that level. Uh, I'm telling you the Jayhawks watch out. Yeah. Their defense still has the ability to give up a shit ton of points, so that so I'm going to take Houston. I do think they'll be able to get the cover, and if not, I'm quitting Houston for the rest of the season. 3 p.m. on the West Coast, uh, Hale State, Mississippi State, heading down to this the 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 grossest uh, below level below sea level place on the planet, LSU. I'm talking shit right now. Baton Rouge, this this environment will be lit. But Brian Kelly, Brian Kelly's a frog. Plus two for LSU. That's uh, a, just crushed Southern last week, sixty-five that, to seventeen. That doesn't happen too often. Plus one twelve on the money line. Strange money line. I'll will say, I'll will say there be another the, fan that just walks out into the into the game? That video was hilarious. He didn't streak. Uh, we're family. It was just here. like he strolled. <laughs> I've never seen a streaker stroll before. You know what he, he looks like, like? Saunters <laughs> out. He looked like the drunk guy who is like, I'm gonna go behind the bar and grab that <laughs> bottle, and then he just starts <laughs> to do it, and he's like, Oh shit, I'm here. Am I really gonna do it? Am I really gonna do it? Uh, Mississippi State is minus. Uh, two. I don't know if I said that. Fifty three and a half is the total. Look, nothing has taken me back off of my stance on this Mississippi State team this week or this year. Nothing has changed my opinion of, of anything that we discussed preseason. So why am I going to walk into this game against LSU, a team that looks? 
I don't think Florida State's a good team. I don't think LSU is gonna. They have talent. I get it. People get like enamored by the talent, but Brian Kelly is walking into a fucking different situation, a different locker room, and I don't get it why everyone just assumes he's gonna be successful. He's not fucking Nick Saban. Nick Saban, I understand why he when he made the trip from the Big Ten down south into SEC country. I understand why it worked. Brian Kelly's not that kind of guy. Well, and it does and seem so, like it's. Uh, I, I think we may have even threw him in one of our early Heisman picks, but you know, Will Rogers looks really good. Like it, it seems like stuff's clicking for him in best the best quarterback offense. in the conference. What? Uh, br- what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Come on, Colby. Did you see Bryce where Young I, play? Uh, Colby, we're a Miss, Mississippi State program. I, I actually yeah. did see uh, Bryce Young play, and he didn't look that good. I mean, he made the game-winning fucking play when they brought that corner blitz. That's true. Um, it's so well, in the game winning play where he threw an incomplete pass out of the end zone, um, <laughs> intentional grounding. I don't, I still don't get how, they but last week, up. Will Rogers, uh, 39 out of 49, 313 yards, four touchdowns, one interception. I mean, it's against Arizona, but that's a nice road uh, win. The air raid looks good when it looks good. Uh, no, but continuity. I mean, this is what's great about this Mississippi state team yeah. is they had the most continuity coming back in the whole sec. And that's why I was high on them. I locked up their, their win total over. And yeah, I mean, look, I think this is this is a game that Leach first and Leach is one and zero in Baton Rouge, believe it or not. But uh, uh, yeah, I just think that the more experienced team, I think Brian Kelly's still gonna have some growing pains. Give me, give me Hale State on the road. Let's go, family. Family. Yes. LSU does have a look ahead spot against conference foe New Mexico. Yeah, Wait, is that New Mexico? State? <laughs> no, both, both, because New Mexico <laughs> so, gets A and M a lot too. You know they they dabble with the, the, those fertile recruiting grounds of uh, of uh, Santa Fe. Yeah, I I think if you're betting LSU, like most of the people are, I think this is a seventy percent. So we'll say sixty five percent on LSU. I think the people who are betting it are just, you're purely betting a brand here. And I think it's you know again, if, could LSU come out and shock me here because they're at home and all that good jazz? Yeah, but Will Rogers, man, I w- I want to bet on this dude, and it's less than three. So Hale State, I'll give a little baby. We'll save this for later, but there might be a cow in the studio. <laughs> Texas Tech had an end. Did you have anything else to say about Hale State? No. Okay. Coach Leach. Texas Tech. Yeah. Shout out to Coach Leach. Texas Tech had an NC State, Raleigh, North Carolina, 7 p.m. local time, 4 p.m. here on the West Coast. NC State minus 10, minus 380 on the money line. Texas Tech coming off a big overtime loss. Win. No, win. Pushed against Plus 140. Houston. Against, or I'm sorry, plus 300 here in this spot. 55 and a half is the total. I don't know what to make of this NC State team. I, part of me thinks they missed. Th- we missed the opportunity for them to shit themselves out of conference, and now it's uh just smooth sailing until some horrible like spot against Wake Forest or something. Texas Tech didn't impress me last week. I was, no, but I mean, what do you like, mean, they won with a backup quarterback. I know, yeah. I know, I know. But maybe I'm just sucking in my Houston. But uh, also, pride. like NC State didn't impress me. Right. I mean, like they no, sh- probably they should have lost you, that ECU game. Um, <laughs> but with, I, I guess what I'm, they, they, they didn't, they didn't, they, they didn't get the choke done. And so it makes me think we've gotten over that hump mm. cause this is a team we like, right? We like the talent. It, the only handicap against NC state being the best team in the sec ACC this year was the fact that NC state always fucks up. They when you don't expect up, them though. to. But this isn't yeah. the game. I think so. I wow. think look, uh Texas Tech I think has the Oh my god. We saw Bailey Zappi at Western Kentucky, right? And and that turnaround there. Well, Zach Kitley's responsible for that. He's the offense coordinator at Texas Tech. This is the Mike Leach guy, and oh. I think he's going to be a head coach at a Power 5 program perhaps next year. Um uh the Red Raiders are 2 and 0. They've looked good. And uh, Donovan Smith, I know they're they still going to miss Tyler Shuck, their starting QB. But Donovan Donovan Smith's won games before in last year in the bowl game and everything. So give me Texas Tech plus ten. Sprinkle some on the money line. Sean, I mean, what I'm worried about is Donovan Smith threw three interceptions uh, last week, and we saw what the NC State defense was able to do Such a good against D-line, ECU. Right? Um, they don't play anyone in the ACC that plays air raid. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take the points just because I think it's a little high. I think it, even if NC State gets up early, I think they'll have trouble covering this big number. It's a little observation. Because I, I just don't, I, from watching that ECU game, I wasn't in love with their offense. I mean, ECU had some nice goal line stands against NC State. I, I, I think they're going to have trouble running it up against Texas Tech. A slight observation from the TMZ college football fan deck. Did we have a lot of dogs come home last week? 
Yes. We're feeling pretty confident about all these big money lines, aren't we? How does that, how do we think that's going to work this week? Hashtag regression. I'm, I'm, one of the things I noted was all of these big dogs that Colby's giving out Air Force, Nebraska, not, not Nebraska, Kansas. The Air Force isn't a dog. They're no, a favorite. No, no, it's yeah. an Air Force Wyoming game. Yeah. Oh, I don't the, think Wyoming's going to win on the money line. Okay. So I'll, I'll, Kansas and Texas Tech yeah. both yeah. getting tremendous amounts of money. As they should. Bet into them. NC State sucks. All right. They never, they were at fool's gold last year. I think right. I think this number is incorporating a little bit of the uh, you know how this NC works, right, State Charles? pre preseason hype. All right, I'll lay the points. I, I think we're running into a favorite slaughter, a favorites slaughter this Ying. weekend. It's <laughs> oh, my voice is so cracked. Uh, it's, just, it's hard. Vegas to and the Will Disley reaction video. Uh, yeah, look, Colby Colby has been walking around the studio this morning touting his. Number one status college football handicapper. Let's on go, Tally's baby. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pull the brakes and do a little bit of fading his picks this week. All right, UTSA. Oh shit, I did it again. Ooh. Michigan State heading to Washington, the great Pacific Northwest. For oh boy, did you see that crowd for that Seahawks game? Nothing, nothing more obvious than Russ not winning in that return to Seattle. This one's also in Seattle, 4:30. Local time. Washington is minus three, minus one seventy on the money line. Michigan State plus one forty. Fifty six and a half is the total. This is a fun non conference game here, right? Yeah, I mean this is. Uh, I mean it's. It, this used to have a you know Big Ten, Pac twelve. They used to do these things before they raided the Pac twelve. Mm. You know. Now they're not friends anymore. <laughs> are, are we? Are, are are you taking the Big Ten team here? No. In the in the bad. No, spot I'm here. not. I am taking. Uh, First off, they they're they're a bit dinged up injury wise. I know that looks good when you beat Akron that way, and I, I was on Michigan State, but uh, week one they had some concerns against an offense that could actually move the ball a little bit, and that was Western Michigan. And Kalen DeBauer, I think, is a cutting edge offensive coach. You can see it already. Washington was awful offensively last year, and they've turned it on in, in two now two games. It wasn't great competition, but uh, who had the worst pass defense in the country last year? Michigan State. Yeah. I saw concerns in that Western Michigan game, and I think yeah. Michael Penix and Washington at home. That's another thing. This place sneaky, sneaky loud with those. Are you turning around on Penix? Uh, I, I always thought Pence with the Bauer is a is a good combination. Pence Pey- without the Bauer is not. Peyton Thorne, even in beating Akron Akron fifty two to nothing, did manage to throw two picks. So I think now you take him on the road in a hostile environment. Uh, I'm with you, Colby. I'm taking Washington. Yeah, I think the Huskies will get up for this. Yeah, and I guess you can. This is a shorter number, but another dog that's getting another dog in a hostile environment getting a shit ton of action. So give me Washington as well. Uh, Pac-12 guy here. How about Wazoo? How about the Cougs last week getting it done Cougs, in Madison? Nice win. Yeah. And and shout out to them because I had a uh, Coug or no, I had Mississippi State. I, I confuse those two programs, but I did have a Mississippi <laughs> State BYU parlay, um, unrelated. Hey, run yes. your pool. Oh. You know, run your pool from running your pool. But they I had just breaking news: brand new subscription service from Run Your Pool that helps you get an extra edge against the books, plus exclusive access to real money pools. Uh, entry to their exclusive week one and week two pools with guaranteed $5,000 payouts, as well as our, their season long uh, pool with a guaranteed hundred thousand dollar payout. Oh my God. Get access to exclusive data to help with your weekly game picks, uh, premium content, like in-depth guides on how to dominate your pools and exclusive swag. The top line is here. If you are a sp- serious sports fan, use code SGPN at runyourpool.com and get 50% off run your pool. We're also brought to you by Odds Trader. Odds Trader is your number one stop when it comes to uh, getting the best odds, comparing everything between all the sports books, uh, handicapping, play by play updates, live scores, bet tracking, key game stats, key. Uh, weather projected game day uh, starters, all that stuff, play by play updates. It is just a, a ton of great info. It really should be your number one shot stop for all your game day bets. Just go to odds trader.com slash blue wire odds trader.com slash blue wire. And uh, 
Actually, you know what? Sorry, I uh, run your pool. Uh, the VIP. Go to runyourpool.com slash VIP and you get 50% off the month of Run Your Pool VIP. That's code SGPN VIP at runyourpool.com slash VIP and oddstrader.com slash blue wire, of course, for all your uh, odds trader needs. Tons of ways to win, man. We're just helping people out left and right. All right. What do we got? One way Home not stretch. One way not to win is to. Uh, Listen too hard to Colby's advice on Kansas. Uh, yeah, it's, it's that's, just the, that's really got a great record of losing. It's just the needle in the haystack. <laughs> UTSA heads to well, they're in Texas, but they're heading to Austin, Texas, to take on meet meet the University of Texas, who are coming off a, a, one oh. of the greatest close wins in program close history. Close losses, right? Uh, yeah, what, yeah, you know what I mean. They, Almost they, did they dump the Gatorade on Quinn Ewers? <laughs> For hey, covering, you covered the twenty well, and a half easily. Is Quinn Ewers okay? Sarkeesian, how about his comments after the game? We didn't lose. We just ran out of time. What a fucking what, what is <laughs> what? <laughs> no, what does that mean? Those refs were terrible. They did get robbed by refs, but I still think Bryce Young would have scored a touchdown on that drive, and the and Texas probably still would have lost. But uh, so you don't think that horrible botched. Something. It's, no, that was a safety. His shin is completely down. If you see the photo, and uh, and so, also, but the face mask might have been worse. It, 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 like the five yard line, Bijan Robinson in the fourth quarter gets just completely blatantly face masked. I, I mean, yeah. this to me is very easy. Um, UTSA by a million. Uh, well, I, I mean, at least at least this cover because Texas Texas a million. Went, Texas went all in on this Alabama game. They hung with them for a lot of the game. This is, you know, this, that was the dream crusher game, Ryan. I mean, we talk about these all the time. They had the dream of taking out Saban in Alabama. They couldn't get it done for a number of reasons. They got hosed by the big 12 refs. Yeah. And regardless, yeah, I actually don't know who the refs were, but yeah, um, horrible call, you know, and UTSA, uh, they look pretty good against army. They hung with Texas or sorry with Houston. Um, I, I think they're a pretty good team. And again, you know, Texas, no Quinn yours, which I, I don't even know if the Colby is like the backup quarterback. Where is he compared to yours? Like well, he started last year, some games, Hudson yeah. card. So yeah. well, he came in and played well, right? I thought he uh, yeah, played but I, I, They were clearly better with yours in the yeah. game. They were stretching the, the also the, against yeah. Alabama, et cetera. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's certainly, certainly not optimal, but um, we just saw this spot, right? Sean. We talked about it with Notre Dame. Yes. Let down spot, which yep. by the way, Marshall scored more points against Notre Dame than Ohio state did for those, <laughs> for those paying attention. I know Marshall got a defensive touchdown by, I, I learned this earlier today. Uh, Stefan Gilmore's younger brother. Yeah. Who's that? Yeah. At, at All Marshall conference there. corner so, there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like we just handicapped this spot to your point. This is all day UTSA. Um, I, I understand Texas might be able to just all gas their way past it, but to the point of no Quinn Ewers, Massive letdown. I mean, yep. you couldn't have a larger letdown spot. Sarkeesian is a like he literally is a recovering alcoholic. This is that was not a good. You loss know he's going to be drinking the entire week. Yeah. He's going to be tempted. I, I just think your your great coaches too come in there and say that you don't say we run out of time. You know what I mean? I think you yeah. say like no, we got to be better at this. We got in the red zone. We couldn't score in the it's red zone. Frank Harris, you know, like Frank Harris for UTSA is good. Yeah, it's very 2022 to say you didn't lose. You just ran out of time. <laughs> Like that's how they handle shit at school now. Like, okay, well, I it, I know you're not advancing in the. We're not going to call it a loss. We're just going to say we ran out of time. <laughs> Pussy. Yeah, UTSA plus eleven all day. I'm with uh, you. Meep meep. Horns down. All right, sorry. So I don't mean to be offensive. I know that's offensive to some. Uh, so we're moving to it's six, triggering Ryan. Uh, six p.m. on the West Coast. This is a less. This is a late kick in College Station, Sean. I guess it's eight p.m. local time. Texas A&M. Minus five and a half versus Miami plus one eighty for the Canes minus two twenty uh, for the Fighting Twelfth Man's forty seven is the total. All right, so what? we're going to a Texas A and M uh, game later on the season. Uh, shout out to Cameron Kerr, going to hang out with him. Will Jimbo Fisher be the the head coach when we go to that game, Colby? Oh man, I'm gonna say yes. Family. He's bringing in this. Well, I don't even know if it's him bringing in this recruiting class or just all that money. So um, my A and M only scored seven points versus App State on offense. How are on they? Offense. They had a kick return for that's a touchdown. True. They yeah. did. Um, uh, yeah, I mean that offense. They they've only been in the red zone one time 
playing Sam Houston State. How can and you Appalachian take them State? laying five and a half? Because Miami at the same time didn't look great. I mean, they kind of yeah. patched it up late, but that was a. I think Miami was up seven to th- or ten to seven. I think at halftime, if memory serves me correct. Um, the, I mean, they were struggling with Southern Miss there. Yeah, no, it was four. It was a uh, ten, ten to seven and a half. Yeah, Miami, Southern Miss is not where they were twenty years ago. That that's a program that's still you know rebounding. Uh, I actually struggle. I think this is one of the harder games. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Jimbo to get it right here. Uh, I'm gonna lay the five and a half, even though Texas A&M. By the way, Texas A&M ranked. What a crock of shit that is, huh? I know we didn't get to the round. Ra- it is it is odd to me that Texas A&M would be ranked. Well, especially over Appalachian State. So let me get this straight. Appalachian State goes into College Station and beats them. Yes, and dominates the game. Like they didn't they 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 didn't throw for over a hundred yards. Didn't rush for over a hundred yards. Texas A and M had a non-offensive touchdown. And right? and Texas A and M week one beat an FCS who by the way lost in week two, so a winless FCS. <laughs> and then Appalachian State, their one loss was to a three and zero North Carolina team by two points. Somebody figure this out for me. This is all a sham. So and, you, and you're taking Texas A and M though. I am because uh, Crystal Ball. I'm, I'm not a big believer in him as you, a coach as X's and O's. You it, don't think that Miami is going to be able to score more score points here? I, I just Texas A and M struggles to score points. I do, but I just think that uh, both teams. I just think A and M. Imagine the twenty eight twenty one. Imagine all the pressure, all the money. This is what money brings, right? Money brings pressure, and not not just to the coach, but the players are getting paid. I agree. I mean, there, there's awesome. a different yeah. level of. Locker room pressure going on at Texas. We have not seen a multi-million dollar recruiting class. He has to win this team game because fall. he's going to lose the next three. They pay everyone's seen it, but they paid App State one and a half million dollars to come play them. That's as much as some of those players uh, maybe got. This is the, the dollars are bringing something that people didn't think about, and it's fucking hilarious that of all the schools for this to kind of start to originate at. Yeah. This is this is Texas A and M. This is the home of the twelfth man, Sean. Did you know the story of the twelfth man? Because I think it's important that our we need to learn about this since we are going to visit Texas A and M. Yes. But uh, this is we're taking you back to 1922, and we had a dude up in the press box, E King Gill, the twelfth man. You know why he's called the twelfth man? He was up in the press box because he he wasn't a player good enough to play football for Texas A and M, but he was on the squad and he was helping the reporters identify numbers of players. When Texas A&M was getting so beat up with injuries, he was brought down to the field, told to suit up as if he was going to get in the game. But he just stood on the fucking sideline. He never played. I actually didn't know this about the story. I thought it was some like epic, like he got in the game, he did something, never played. So their whole aura around this fucking cool stadium vibe that the Seahawks um, pay them for pay them for the uh, the opportunity to call their stadium the twelfth man. It's all about a guy who never played football. He didn't play in the fucking game. Yeah, but he suited up. Uh, yeah, that's Rudy weird. was a pussy, but at least he made a tackle. Oh, right. He was offsides. All right. <laughs> I mean, jo- jo- I'm I'm going with Joe Montana on this one. He thinks Rudy's a pussy, but at least he played in the game. So, um, little history for our trip to Texas A and M, but yeah, I, I don't think you can take Texas A and M laying any points against anybody. This is a must win game. They have Arkansas Can't at play. Mississippi state and at Bama on deck. They have to win this one. They'll find a way to get it. What done. is the issue with Texas A and M this year? Can't score points. Don't have an offense. It's been longer mm-hmm. than that. So why yeah. would we, why would we think that's going to change against the, well, uh, I, mean, I don't know that, that Miami's very good. I don't know that they're very good. Like, They're going to be able to score a couple. We'll points. see. Can, can you score twenty-one points? That's enough to beat Texas A&M. I don't know that they can. Oh, yeah. that's fair then. <laughs> Miami, give me the give me the points. You're insane for laying the points here, Colby. Fresno. I'm on Miami as well. All right, late kick on the West Coast, seven thirty p.m. You got the private school pussies of Southern California taking on one of the games we highlighted. This is a trip up potential. Fresno State coming to town, coming off that. Ooh. Just heartbreaking loss to Oregon that was State. Hilarious. Beavers. We oh. were, of course, pulling for the Beavers. Fresno State's catching 12 in this one. 350 on the money line. USC minus 450. 73 is the total. You can tell they expect Lincoln Riley and this offense to keep it up. The question is can can Fresno State hang with them? Yes. USC has had zero turnovers this season. They've been perfect. Yeah. But they played Rice and Stanford, guys. I, mean, I know, I not, agree. No, but not, still yeah. zero turnovers yeah. is impressive. Yeah. 
I agree, but Stanford had one of the worst defenses in the country last year, and Rice hasn't been relevant since since Tommy Kramer played quarterback. No, a great a, a great Kramer, of course. But no, we did we did say though the offense if it was going to struggle maybe early in the season they look fucking dialed. They've in. come out and looked really sharp. Agreed, agreed. I mean, you can't take that away from them, but <laughs> of course not. Jake Hayner, you know, you know, uh, he's a you know who his favorite team was growing up. Who? USC. Oh boy. You know who didn't get extended scholarship oh, for him? Oh no. Chip on his shoulder. Duh. USC. You know who's one of the best quarterbacks in college football? It's Jake fucking Hayner. Give me the twelve points. Last time Fresno went there, they they only lost by eight. Uh, th- dude, this one's got USC is not going to be able to stop the Fresno offense. This this game's going to be bananas. Um, they did let up twenty eight to Stanford. Yeah, then Fresno's going to be able to score Stanford, on that though. offense. Uh, you know what? I'll I'll ride with Colby. Mm. I mean, USC is certainly one of the more public teams out there. They're 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 hot off of just rolling. Like you know, people aren't going to dive that deep. They're going to be like, wow, this uh, no turnovers. They're just. I think the first half they didn't do anything but score points, uh, or end the half. Like they're just hyper efficient right now. So, you know, get them into a little bit of a dog fight. See what happens. Take the points. Makes sense to me. Dog. But yeah. I, but I will say, I definitely don't know the money line. I feel like that's going to be next. Week. I yeah. was agreed. I was considering taking USC, but the fact that he had a chip on his shoulder was something to prove. Much like Justin Fields, uh, uh, proving oh, to proving to the 49ers that they should have drafted him over Trey Lance. I ex- I'll, I'm with you guys. I'll take Fresno. Yeah, I, plus twelve. I, I think they're you know, it's tough because this twelve point spread is not a normal twelve point spread because of the, how these teams score. But I think there's enough for them to get in the maybe a little backdoor action here. All right. We made it. We did all thirteen games again. We're doing thirteen for some odd. Everyone knows thirteen's a bad luck number. Lock dog and tees presented by WinBet. Sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash WinBet. Kick it off, Kramer. What do you got? Or do we want to start with Cole? Well, did did we was the experiment good last week? Because I didn't do well. Not I hit going I hit Duke money line, which was awesome for me, and I went oh, one on one on my oh, locks. Yeah. See, yeah. see this. We we missed the time. I had to talk him into yeah, that. You, you know, it doesn't give me any that. credit over here. What no, do you mean? I had Duke. You, the, I know, but the clip. I'm Col- saying Colby, that, this and, is and the, the clip. Man. I go, dude. You should take Duke on the money line. He's yeah. got the blinders on. <laughs> I said yes. <laughs> he spells team with two eyes, Colby. This shouldn't be surprising. How about the Duke Blue Devils? Aren't they great? You know, I was almost going to take Pitt, but smartly. I got yeah. great advice from Colby. Oh, who took Pitt? Look at that. <laughs> hey, if Keaton Slovis doesn't go down, they win that game. All right. Um I I will happily lead this one off. Go for uh, it. I think step one, boy. Um I think the Scott Frost, I think someone mentioned it in the chat earlier, but the Scott Frost, like dead bounce. Uh th- like this is not there's no there's no rebound here week one. So give me Oklahoma minus twelve. Um second lock. We'll just ju- jump right to a second lock. I, you know, I re- I really like, I really like this uh, Mississippi state team. I want to be on them. I know it's a tricky spot here, but let me take Mississippi state minus two for my, can I take a pick them as a dog? No, I mean for my dog, come it, on, right? Uh, I'm, I'm uh, the, Texas a and I'm, I'm fading whatever they're dealing with in their locker room right now. Cause like I said, the, the pressure they're, they're dealing with is greater than any college program in the land. And I think to your point, the fact that Jimbo, like the fact that there's even speaking like Jimbo fired that it's either back against the wall or guess what? When you're not there because of the coach and because of the program and it's just money, maybe that passion to have that must win isn't quite as high. So mm-hmm. Miami plus 180, and for the T Sean's favorite part of the show, NC state minus four Houston minus four. UTSA plus seventeen. Mm. All right, I'm all, I'm all over the place there. All right, now, let's see which one of these dogs do I like the best. You got too many dogs on the card this week, Sean. You gotta be Me? careful. Gotta be careful. I have two. I have a feeling we three, might three, uh, four, five, six, seven. Ugh. That's almost fifty fifty. Right? Just so many dogs. <laughs> Ryan never met a dog he didn't like. I have five right, dogs. You, You're not counting Syracuse as a dog, are you? No, um, I do like Syracuse at home though. Yeah, give me Syracuse for a lock, and then uh, Penn State minus three on the road. They get it done in Auburn for my dog. Give me UTSA. This is this is this is how these things go. UTSA meet me um, plus three hundred. <laughs> That's this is dangerous because Sean just likes saying meet me. 
I do. It is. I stole from Colby. It's a fun gimmick. Uh, for my tease, give me Louisville up to eight. That's just good tease value right there. See, I avoided that one. I didn't want to fuck around with teasing that one. I don't think Wong fucks around with college. <laughs> uh, Oklahoma down to minus six, and then uh, Miami plus eleven and a half. A lot of key numbers there. Colby, what do you got? We're locking up Penn State minus three. They're just a flat out way better football team than Auburn. A little concerned about the road, but they're going to get it done. Penn State by seven. Uh, dog, look, I'm trying to give you guys the most value here. Dog, take wow. take Nebraska plus three fifty at home in Lincoln. Wow. Mm. Okay. Uh, wow. That's th- really okay. Then let's go for the tease. Let's, sorry, Colby. Let's I accidentally take, hit that sound. Let's effect. take. Uh, it's okay. You'll be sorry next week. Uh, let's let's uh bring uh what are we doing here? Let's let's uh let's go Mississippi State yeah. plus four. Oh my goodness! Uh, what are we doing? Let's go. Um, let's Come go on, Fresno Colby. plus what is that? Eighteen. <laughs> Fresno plus eighteen, and let's go. Rich. Let's go Wyoming plus twenty one. We should cancel Ooh. the tease. Bonus lock. Yes, it's the year of the Sun Belt. South Alabama plus fifteen and a half in the in that shitty stadium right down the street. The Rose South Bowl. Alabama plus yeah. ten and a half. Yeah, it's UCLA. Let's go fifteen and a half. Let's go. It. Hey, don't forget to put your uh, college football uh, picks in for the contest. Sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash Discord. Hop in there as well. Chat it up. Uh, Discord's a lot of fun. A lot of a lot of new folks in there. Baptize them in the way of the DGens. Fifteen and a half, not ten and a half, buddy. Fifteen and a half. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, uh, toss us a nice rating and review. Leave a five star and then uh, send in the screenshot of you submitting the review for uh, Merch Monday. All you got to do is uh, do it through the app there. Make sure you check out Colby Dant and the college football experience. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stagging the Muddy Green. He is Ryan. You're going to want to grab a piece of that Hendon Hooker Heisman action, or as Terrell just n- named in the chat, Heisman Hooker, still 40 to 1. They're laying 47 and a half points against Akron this week. Kramer, let it ride.